This is an electric arc. Its center contains plasma heated up to a temperature of 36,000 degrees Fahrenheit. In such cases, normal clothing ignites like a torch and literally melts into the human skin. In the production of super suits, aramid fibers resistant to the thermal effect are used. Their main and most obvious advantage is the fact that heat-resistant polymers absorb heat. Let's see how it happens. Attention, the test in the test in chamber eight continues. Do not approach the chambers. With high speed shooting, we can clearly see that the suit is smoldering, but not burning. When the temperature exceeds 715 degrees Fahrenheit, the outer layer of the fabric is somehow baked. It hardens and prevents the fire from getting under the suit. This process is called carbonization. Yes, the outer layer is strongly carbonized and partially destroyed, to a great extent in certain places. However, the inner layer remains untouched and undamaged and preserves its color. This is the suit of an employee of Russian Railways. It is a year and a half old, but it still preserves its protective qualities. Actually, the appearance of the clothing is pushed to the background. What matters is not how well the suit looks, but how well it protects the wearer. We'll make the task more difficult. We put some money into the inside pocket of the jacket. If the paper bill remains untouched, a person surely shouldn't worry about burns. The zipper is preserved. It can be undone. It's undamaged, not even darkened. It indicates that the heat stream didn't enter the space under the clothes. And the wear was spared from burns. The conditions are extremely harsh during the test. The flame burns for two seconds, and four sensors record changes of the temperature under the clothes. It allows us to estimate the residual burn, that is, the damage that will be suffered when the fire dies out. The stall curve is used as a reference during such tests. It determines the limit of human abilities. Simply put, it allows scientists to understand whether a human being would survive under the effect of high temperatures or not. The heat effect was stronger than with the previous suit, but this one passed the test. It looks scarier on the outside because the outer layer suffered greatly. It is nearly completely destroyed. There are no burns in the space under clothes. That is, the lining is not damaged at all, and its color remains unchanged. Everything is clean and nice here. A human would survive for sure. There are only four laboratories in the world in which such tests are conducted. One of them is located in Russia. The rest are in Canada, Spain, and Switzerland. This plant is powered by a 100 megavolt ampere generator. It alone can provide illumination for a small settlement. The plant allows us to develop a current of about eight kiloamperes. It's the current value and a duration of up to approximately five seconds. According to the state standard specification, it is more than 100 calories per 0.1 square inch. This is the measure of the energy that reduces under the effect of the electric arc. This is the maximum value recorded in the normative documentation. 100 calories per 0.1 square inch. That is, this is a very strong effect on a human under exposure to the arc. In order to understand how much aramid fiber is better than ordinary fabric, we took an ordinary overall and a special suit, started a fire, and tried to create the conditions similar to those that arise in case of a short circuit. 
the overall failed to endure the consequences of a high temperature. In the special suit, on the other hand, only the outer layer was damaged. Let's enjoy this spectacle once again, this time in slow motion. I wouldn't want to be standing there. It took a lot of effort to extinguish a fire this strong. However, it's worth reminding that such suits protect the wearer not from the effect of current, but only from high temperatures resulting from a rising of the electric arc. If the voltage is low, common insulating equipment will help, for example, rubber boots. However, there is other equipment for high voltage. Coming up, what can protect a person from electrical discharges of extremely high voltage? How do pilots manage to remain conscious during overloads in warplanes? And a special experiment of our program, man versus a chainsaw. Who would win? Clothes with superpowers. We'll continue in a couple of minutes. People cannot protect themselves from high voltage, but they can drive it away from them without harming their health. This principle can be formulated in the following way. Electrical current doesn't go deeper than metal. This is why people in planes, trolleybuses, or streetcars are safe from a lightning strike, for example. Michael Faraday was one of the first people to use this effect. He created a cage in which the person would be protected from electromagnetic effect. Subsequently, this design became known as Faraday's cage. Tesla's protective suit is designed in the same manner. There are special terminals on it. First, electrical current passes through the first one and is supplied to the metalized fabric of the suit, after which it goes into the ground through the second one. What kind of super suit is it if it has no additional abilities? Let's check those abilities. I'm going to put on the jacket and grab the naked live wire with one hand and the plug of this kettle with the other hand. The question is, will the water boil inside the kettle? Well, of course not. We won't test the protective suit in such an extreme manner. However, we'll still try to make water in the kettle burn. The scheme works in the following way. Two dummies form a single electrical circuit. We'll connect the kettle to it and check whether it will boil. Can we light a bulb, for example, in the same manner? Another success. All right, another experiment. We've prepared a much more interesting experiment for this suit using this Tesla coil. Shall we turn it on? The Tesla coil creates an electric field around itself. Standing inside this field without protection is dangerous for life. The suit is a shutting element in relation to my body. It has low resistance, while my body has high resistance. The current passes through the suit, and I don't even feel it. The suit serves as a protective screen. At the same time, the bulb located inside the electric field lights up. What if we try to create an improvised protective screen for it as well? The bulb stops receiving current and dies out immediately. The metal mass shields the bulb. Similarly, a man in the suit is shielded from the effect of the field. 
I'm testing the way in which the Tesla suit protects the wearer from the effects of electrical current. In theory, it's all safe. However, I'm not actually excited about checking it in practice. All right, Artyom, regardless of all safety claims, I don't really feel safe. Anyway, we're going to begin. All right, switch it on. Right? What's the voltage now? About a million volts. I see, yeah, I feel it now. If I hold my hand for a long time, it becomes hot. It is heat at right. In such suits, it is possible, for example, to pass the charge to each other. However, it should be noted that in real conditions, such discharges can remain safe while still causing unpleasant feelings. We've decided to pass the discharge to a common paper sheet and it didn't go unnoticed for it. There are very small dots in the points of penetration. Yeah, right, it actually burns through. But let's get distracted from our tests a bit. We've become interested in the following. How are these suits created? And what tests do they undergo before being put into serial production? We'll take three samples. Fabric made of aramid fibers. Cotton impregnated with a special compound for improving its protective qualities. And common cotton without additives. For aramid fabrics, we check safety indicators such as toxicity, formaldehyde, color stability, physical and mechanical properties, tensile strength, tearing resistance, and a mandatory safety indicator, fire resistance, heat resistance, or resistance to thermal radiation. Having the same weight, aramid fabrics are distinguished by their increased density, wear resistance, and resistance to convective heat. The tensile strength of the fabric, and subsequently its durability, is determined in the following way. A two inches wide strap is stretched until it breaks. Maximum tension is measured in newtons. For fireproof fabrics, it should not be less than 800 newtons. During the effect of the electric arc, Strength is one of the most important parameters. It determines, among other things, whether the fabric will endure the extreme conditions and protect the wearer or not. Another necessary property is fire resistance. Fire resistance is determined by subjecting the sample with fire for a certain period of time. We ignite the edges for 10 seconds after the flame died out. Residual burning and residual smoldering were registered. According to the technical regulations, the duration of these processes shall be not more than two seconds. This is one of the most important indicators of the fabric safety and its protective characteristic. The fabric that is designed for protection from thermal risks shall not burn or smolder. And finally, the third mandatory test is for hydrophobic properties. It determines how well the fabric repels water, since the suits should work properly not just indoors, but also in the street during snow or rain. Aramid fabric arrives at the processing workshop in 110 yard rolls. Here it gets stitched and painted. This is unique coloring. Not many facilities paint aramid fibers here in Russia. The method consists in aramid, is a dance fabric. That is, it is necessary to open pores of the polymer to drive the dye inside. The dye is driven inside the fiber at high temperature. Due to this, the paint becomes resistant to external factors, for example, washing. It is painted under pressure at a temperature over 212 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to prevent boiling of the solution, a special device called a jig is used. After that, the material is dried 
and subjected to a new test. Both new and new suits are tested. Our suits are not just worn for two years. They serve a man for those two years. They can be washed at least 50 times. After that, they preserve their protective qualities and even improve them sometimes. This is how we design these suits. In addition to the special suits for those working in the energy industry, the facility also manufactures special equipment for protection from chainsaws. The manufacturers claim if you wear such a suit while working, you can forget about accidental cuts. Moscow Chainsaw Massacre. Or how to protect yourself from such a tool. Anti-overload suits and their testing. We'll continue talking about clothes with superpowers in a couple of seconds. Our next hero is the suit that protects the wearer from cuts and can even stop a chainsaw. The interesting composition of the suit allows stopping the chainsaw in time in order to prevent it from damaging the skin or generally damaging a person otherwise. This suit can stop the teeth of a chainsaw rotating at a speed of 66 feet per second. The protection from cuts in the suit is ensured by inner layers made of a special high strength material. Its threads are wound up onto the tooth, jam in the saw mechanisms and block the saw immediately. All right, is it a deadly trick? Shall we check this thesis? Let's imagine a situation where you have to protect yourself from a person with a chainsaw. And we're actually going to do that. We'll try to saw off my hand, which is protected by the special suit. True experiments require all kinds of sacrifice. Ready? Come on. Well, not really. Actually, we pulled a trick. This is a dummy's head, not mine. However, what's the verdict? The suit managed with the task. The fibers actually blocked the saw. The result is more than impressive, considering the fact that we're talking about nothing but clothes. One, two, three. Oh. Being accustomed to superheroes in movies, we forget that suits that give people superpowers actually exist. It's just that they are needed for work associated with elevated risks. Unlike cinematic exhibits, these clothes look very ordinary. They only demonstrate their superpowers when it's necessary to protect a human life. 